All right, in this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about the principles and concepts around powerlifting, uh, competitive powerlifting, but also just for people who might not want to compete but utilize the principles and concepts of powerlifting to benefit their physiques, to burn more body fat, build more muscle, speed up their metabolism. So we talk about powerlifting itself. We talk about the muscles that are involved with the three main lifts. We talk about maximal strength. Like what are the differences between powerlifting style or types of training versus like bodybuilding or other forms of resistance training, you know, movement versus feel. We talk about the aesthetic effects. Like if you train with a cycle of powerlifting, how is it going to change how your body looks? We also talk about the value of moving your body, uh, moving yourself from being body image centric to performance centric and why this may be of benefit uh, to a lot of people. Also, um, we have just released our newest MAPS program. Um, it's MAPS Powerlift, so it's perfect for this episode. It is the first MAPS program that is based on powerlifting. So if you're an experienced lifter, but you've never done powerlifting before, you can enroll in this program, follow it from beginning to end, and be ready for your first competition. Or if you're somebody that wants to just benefit from the concepts of powerlifting, you want to get stronger at those three lifts and get all the and reap all the benefits of it, follow this program. We co-wrote this program with uh, decorated powerlifter Ben Pollock. Um, he's got coaching videos in there as well. So all the questions you may have about powerlifting, like how to use a belt or what do the lights mean in the competition or what, to, what do the coaches look for, what to eat, that kind of stuff. What do the different federations mean? Um, that's all in there as well as exercise demos and workout blueprints all designed around power lifting. Now the, the, the program is getting launched right now. So we do have a launch special, which will be going on for the next four days and that's $40 off. So here's what you do. Go to mapspowerlift.com and use the code power 40 P O W E R four zero, no space for the discount. And also you will get a free t-shirt when you enroll. You know, I think that there's been a, a recent explosion in interest uh, and uh, in people actually enrolling in powerlifting type competitions. Have you guys noticed this? Yeah, I have noticed that. Mainly like across the board on Instagram, I've just been seeing a lot more posts of people doing deadlift specific PRs, you know, squat PRs, things like that. Like I've been seeing people like really focused on that. Yeah, I think this is a, a really good thing. I think it's a great thing because um, fitness is usually so centered around uh, image. It's so image centric, how you look, mm -hmm. that a lot of people lose the performance aspect of it. Now, there's negatives of being too focused on either one. Sure. But I think it needs to balance out a little bit. Um, oh, I think we're more focused on the way we look than than the way we perform, for sure. Uh, oh, as, yeah. As, that as a still whole. outweighs it. Right. As a Substantially. whole. As a whole, we yeah. care, I, I think. And so I think, generally speaking, I think it's incredible. And I, I, you know, I wonder sometimes where it probably came from. Like, again, this is another area where uh, I, I feel like uh, – CrossFit played a big role. Like I think that um, before CrossFit, I personally never even heard people talk about PRs, which obviously personal records have been for sure in powerlifting been around forever. They mm -hmm. hadn't been using the term PR. At yeah, before. I used to say like max weight. What's your max weight? Right. And then it became like this. I feel like CrossFit just put everything in acronyms. Yeah. And well, that, like that was like their main thing. Either that or they popularized strength training for women for sure better than anybody else did better and oh, better yeah. than powerlifting even did but because they got introduced to squats deadlifting moves like that in crossfit and and watched themselves get stronger and saw the benefits from it and then that that being highlighted and i think now it's kind of coming full circle where you know, and we talk a lot about this. That uh, I'm not a fan of uh, programming or, or for the programming in CrossFit. I, I would never recommend that to any of the clients that I trained, but I would recommend uh, a powerlifting protocol to clients. I, I, one of the best things I ever did for clients was get them to focus on strength and performance over the way that they looked because there's a there's. Again, there, there can be problems with each, but when you're focused just on appearance, the signals aren't as clear. Like I can 
lose weight on the scale, uh, but you know maybe it's because I'm dehydrated or I just cut some carbs out. I can do things to my body that aren't super healthy, but oh, I'm skinnier. You know, my pants are looser or my dresses are looser. Um, but when it comes to performance, if you're stronger, the workout's working. Yeah. Like there's no there's no doubt about it. If you're if you're lifting more weight. The workout is working. Whereas if you're just... It's very objective. It's very clear. It is. And when I would get clients who were super focused on their appearance, but getting them focused on performance, as the performance improved, as they got stronger, the appearance followed. It usually it wasn't the other way around. Like appearance can sometimes... You can change your size and have performance decline, lose weight, not realizing you're losing a lot of muscle or doing right. things the wrong way. There's lots of tricks you can do to manipulate the way you look. That's you, right. You know, and so you can... You can definitely go down the path of, uh, you, you know, not drinking enough water, not not feeding yourself enough, like just oh, like overwhelming your body with cardiovascular type training uh, and, and losing weight. But I mean, how healthy, how strong, how it's, vibrant are you? It's so subjective. Like how you look is so subjective. We have a perception of ourselves and we look in the mirror and oftentimes it's not accurate. I don't know. You know, I had this experience recently. I saw a picture of myself when I was like 15 years old flexing in the backyard with my cousin. And I look at the picture and I realize something shocking to myself. I was not nearly as skinny as I thought I was. And I had this insecurity about being a super skinny kid. Mm -hmm. But I look at the picture, I'm like, hey, I looked pretty damn good. But at the time, you couldn't have convinced me otherwise. Now, with when it comes to strength, it's objective. You add weight to the bar, there's no denying it. I also think there's a lot of value in teaching the principles of progressive overload and that a lot of clients... But there's a saying in our community that you're either exercising or training. And if you're training, you're following a protocol, you're progressively overloading, and you're getting stronger. If you're exercising, you could be coming to the gym and doing the same exercises every single day and not be progressing in strength whatsoever. Yeah, you do 50 jumping jacks. And I would argue that a lot of people that I trained in my career fell in that exercise category. Mm -hmm. In fact, they were exercising and they weren't progressing and therefore that's what sent them to hire me and they mm -hmm. I would then evaluate their their programming or their if they had even had one uh, how they were eating their behaviors and one of the most common things that I would see is and, and this was both male and female but probably more popular with my female clients that they had this routine that they did they, and the and a weight that they did it with or a class body pump class or something that they took where they're using the same weights the same routines and they're doing it day in and day out and i knew just by simply uh, teaching them some better movements and or progressively overloading them properly their body would just would just respond but a lot of people have a hard time with learning to to reach like that or stretch themselves like that and so the principles uh, that are that are found in powerlifting and what it takes to to learn how to powerlift right. you you have to I'll, get good at that I'll tell you what Pushes if the boundaries. if if I was to pick one structured form of exercise with with weights that is competitive that would benefit most people done appropriately it would be powerlifting mm -hmm. it really would getting people to be able to build their maximal strength with the three core lifts because this is what powerlifting here this is what competitive powerlifting is it really is about getting better at three lifts bench press squat and deadlift now those three lifts are three of the most important beneficial exercises that you could do among all the resistance training exercises now i'm not saying that they're the only ones but what i am saying is those three have a ton of value. And combined, those three movements have more value than almost any other combination of any other three exercises that you can think of. So they're extremely valuable. And so powerlifting is just getting stronger at those three things. So if you were, if, P, if someone were to, comp to pick a structured form of competitive lifting, think of all the different types, right? There's Olympic lifting, mm -hmm. kettlebell type competitions. There's Olympic lifting, CrossFit, I guess you could put in that category. Which one do you think done properly would benefit most people most of the time? Not that saying everybody, because it's not for everybody, but which one has the principles that you think will apply to most people? And I think it would be powerlifting. Yeah. Because it's uh, those three lifts, as complex as they are, are not so complex like Olympic lifting where you're going to be spending a year just on practicing technique. 
It's not explosive, um, so it's a little safer. Um, it is focusing on something that, you know, when you're working for maximal strength, if you're a highly stressed individual not getting good sleep, you can only make it to the gym twice a week. You know, doing a full-blown CrossFit-type workout or long cycle of kettlebells can be taxing as hell on your body. But doing five or six slow sets of three or four reps of a squat or a deadlift or a bench press, not nearly as taxing on the central nervous well, system. It's a lot body. like your example with a boxer and getting really good at like one to three punches. Right. You know, and how effective that is in a fight versus, you know, your MMA fighter that has to really worry about like jujitsu, has to worry about like kickboxing, has to worry about like, like uh, hundreds of moves has to learn hundreds of moves just to stay competitive uh, and and to really just hone in on those like real specific skills that have the most carryover in that particular direction. That's the same thing with fitness. Those three lifts have the most carryover in getting stronger and that benefiting you and your fitness and your health. Yeah, it's, it's my favorite way of taking someone from being body image centric to performance. It's like, a, and this is, uh, one of my favorite tools with, with female clients, they would come to me wanting, and I, and I would know, okay, we need to work on getting your metabolism a little faster. We need to work on building a little bit of muscle. So you get that shape that you're looking for. It'll make fat loss a lot easier. How do I get this person to go into that mindset? Best way possible, get them to focus on strength. Mrs. Johnson or Mrs. Whatever, I'm going to get you focused on getting stronger at these lifts. We're going to celebrate the gains that you make in these lifts. And once I get them to focus on those things, it's so much easier to get them leaner and to build muscle and to speed up their metabolism because it's not all about appearance. Well, to Justin's point too about carryover, and I think it's important that we explain what that means to people. Like, what does that mean? You guys say that all the time that, mm -hmm. you know, this exercise has so much carryover. Well, when I think about those three core lifts and if I get a client really, I, and I don't train them on anything else, not that I'm advocating for that, but if I only trained them on those You could three only lifts, pick three exercises. Yeah, right. If I could only pick three exercises and we only trained those three and we got really good at it, I know as a coach that I then can go teach that same client who's really good at deadlifting, they'll pick up bent over rows so fast. They'll pick up a seated row so quick. They'll do an, a single dumbbell row, no problem. Lap pull down, no problem. They'll figure out the skill sets to do that because they laid such a solid foundation with a movement like deadlift. I can't say the same thing if I taught someone how to dumbbell row, T-bar row, or bent over row, and then showed them a deadlift. They could, they could do those other three exercises for a year, and then the first time they do a deadlift, they'll be an absolute mess. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the carryover that I see with all of those three movements is they're, they're so foundational, and they require so much uh, synergy amongst all the muscles of the body when you're doing those exercises that when you do other ones that are more like isolation exercises or just not as complex – they come way quicker and easier. They send the loudest muscle building signal um, as measured by... So there's something in the body called myostatin um, and follistatin, which um, are inversely related. And they tell the body to build muscle or to not build muscle. The extra, And they can measure them um, after you do a certain exercise or a type of workout. And these those three exercises, especially the squat and the deadlift, send by far, in comparison to other individual exercises, the loudest muscle building signal. In other words, deadlifting and squatting in particular and bench pressing, doing those movements is going to send a louder signal than the than another 10 exercises combined, another 10 random resistance training exercises combined. So it's just bang for your buck. It's like you're trying to dig a hole. You want to dig a 10-foot hole. Now you got a backhoe. Like you only need a couple swipes of that backhoe and it's 10 feet versus having to use a shovel or a spoon, in which case you're going to be there for months trying to dig uh, the same kind of hole. What about fat loss? Well, indirectly, because it's sending the fat the biggest muscle building signal, it's going to influence your metabolism in the most positive way. You're going to get a bigger metabolism boost from getting better at those three lifts than you will at getting better at another three lifts or another five or six or seven lifts. So it's also going to burn the most body fat. Calorie burn. You do 20 sets of barbell squats, excuse me, 20 reps of barbell squats, you're going to burn more calories than doing 20 reps of most other traditional strength training, uh, resistance training type uh, exercises. Hormones, they've even measured testosterone spikes in men after exercises. You want to guess what the top two exercises are for testosterone boosting? Squat and deadlift. Yeah. They just are 
they just give the most bang for your buck. Now we're not. I'm not saying that they're the only exercises you you to to really develop a well-rounded body and get maximal benefit out of your workouts. You want to do a lot of different things, but those lifts tend to be the cornerstones, or they should be at least the cornerstones of uh, your routine. And powerlifting style training focuses on those, and then it focuses on exercises that are not those exercises. So the, it does have you know powerlifting style training. So Forget competitive powerlifting for a second. Let's just say you want to train with powerlifting principles, okay? You are going to make the bench, deadlift, and squat the cornerstone of your routine, but then there's all these other exercises that help you get better at those movements. So you're going to be doing exercises like split stance squats. You're going to be doing things like, you know, reverse hypers, or you're going to be doing, you know, dumb, uh, you know pull downs to, to get your body better at doing those major those three lifts, but those are the cornerstone. The other principle of powerlifting style training is developing what's known as maximal strength. Maximal strength is the kind of strength where you can lift the most amount of weight one time. Yeah. Now, does that benefit you um, in the real world? Absolutely. There's a lot of carryover. You get your maximal strength to go up, your base of strength goes up, which then contributes to other forms of strength. Oh, even there's, a, there's, there's a way that you can apply this uh, right away and actually feel this working. This is like one of my favorite things when teaching uh, the benefits of maximal strength. And I can show somebody like anytime I can find like a trainer tip where I can like show somebody like the, why this is so beneficial. So I'll take an exercise uh, like a seated row or any, any, any major back exercise uh, that we would do that's different from the deadlift. And most clients or most people have a pretty good idea of what's a good amount of weight for them if they've been lifting for some time, right? Like, oh, when I see the row, like, you know, 130 is like my what's heavy for me or whatever. I love to take that person, take them over and pull, you know, a weight on the deadlift that is the, what they can only do like one or two times max weight. And then go over, let their body rest for a few, you know, 30 seconds to a minute and a half or whatever. Then go over to that exercise and let them feel it. And you can feel that difference. Oh, you, yeah. ever, you ever deadlift, you know, really, really heavy and then go over, do like a pull up. All of a sudden, like you, you fly up on the bar yep. because of that uh, training, that maximal strength like that. And so you get a kind of a, a small little taste of those benefits like immediately yep. and you can show that to yeah. people. One of the biggest differences I would say with, powerlifting style training versus training to, you know, build muscle or shape the body or sculpt the body or whatever. One of the biggest differences is this. When I'm going into the gym and I'm training with more bodybuilding principles, a lot of what I'm doing is I'm trying to feel muscles mm -hmm. while I'm training them. You know, I'm trying to feel my chest when I bench press. I'm trying to feel my lats when I do a pull-up. I'm trying to feel my delts when I do an overhead press. Powerlifting style training doesn't care. It's all about the weight that you're moving and the technique and form that you're using to maximize your biomechanics. With powerlifting style training, you your form is crucial, but differently than it would be for bodybuilding. With bodybuilding, form is crucial because you're trying to feel something. With powerlifting, your form is crucial because you're trying to make it the most- As effective as possible. Effectively, the most biomechanically advantageous and safest. Right. I'm trying to squat in a way that lets me lift the most weight in the most advantageous way possible, in the safest way possible. Now, why? Now, what is the carryover? What is the benefit for the body? Well, I'll tell you something. I could do a slow squat where I'm focusing on building my quads and, and really feeling it in my quads and use 200 pounds. Or I could lift 300 pounds with really good form and just focus on my, my technique. The one that's going to give me the loudest muscle building signal is going to be the, the movement. And this is a very important thing to learn. In fact, it's one of the first things I teach clients when I train them with some with certain lifts. It's like, okay, I know you're deadlifting and you're working your glutes with the deadlift. We're not going to work on feeling the glutes right now. Mm -hmm. I want your form perfect. I want to maximize the biomechanics of this movement and the leverage of the movement so that you can lift the most weight safely. Yeah, one thing I've learned about like optimizing strength is or unlocking my true strength potential because – what I found is that we're capable of so much more than we realize. And a lot of that is that synergistic effect of all the parts working together most effectively. And so that's your mindset. That's the way that you're mechanically moving through that exercise. 
That's activating the right muscles at the right time. That's the ability to get the most force from your central nervous system as possible to be able to now take that weight and bring it up to your body in, in the way that the exercise is structured. And, and to be able to do that, it takes a lot of different moving parts to, to, to all work together at once. And so this is, this is why these three lifts, they, they really display that orchestra where I do need all those things to work harmoniously for me to be able to then add weight. And this is a, a completely objective process. I'm either getting stronger or I'm not. And where where are the the pieces of this process that I need to hone in on and refine? This is why I love Sal's, you know, analogy of the speaker and the amps. And I know that it's an, an oversimplification of what the central nervous system is, but I think the central nervous system is such a complex thing to try and explain mm -hmm. to clients that when he said that the first time on the podcast, I've probably repeated it probably maybe more times than he has now because I think it's such a great way to get... It's a good visual. Yeah, it's a great visual for a really complicated uh, thing to explain to people. And that is simply this for to get the point across that you know when in in bodybuilding we do a lot of you know focusing on on, on the muscles and building the muscles and that con the the mind muscle connection and so you know thinking of the muscles like speakers and the central nervous system is more like an amplifier and the obviously they both need each other they both work together uh, without one the other one doesn't work um, but the central nervous system is that important. Anybody uh, that's familiar with uh, buying a stereo system or has ever put one together or understands how speakers put out the music is you need the amplifier to, to do that. And you could have smaller speakers and an extremely strong amp, and you are going to get the most out of those speakers. And sometimes we'll put out a better sound than bigger, more impressive speakers because the amp is so strong. And so that's what uh, I love explaining to people uh, is the importance. And I, and I did, this didn't really uh, click for me until way later. Like I had been training for, you know, 10 years as a, you know, more like a bodybuilder because I didn't identify with a power lifter. I saw power lifting and I thought, I don't want to be a power lifter. So why should I do heavy deadlifts and you know, heavy squats, it, I just didn't see the value and it didn't make sense to me. And because I knew that I was sculpting the body already with neglecting those things, I didn't see enough value in it yet until I actually applied it. And when I saw how much value it was, it blew my fucking mind and then forever changed my conversation with clients and, and people that are questioning whether they should be training like a power lifter or not. It, it could be the single best thing that you ever do in your training. It was for me. It was probably the single best thing I ever did was starting to move in that direction of heavy deadlifting and squatting because I didn't do it for so long. Yeah. And remember when your body's building muscle or changing, it's a process of adaptation and your muscles grow because your body thinks it's advantageous to, to grow them. Let's say that you're using the same analogy of the speakers and the amplifier. Let's say, remember the speakers being the muscles, the amplifier being the central nervous system. Let's say you just increase the output of your amp. Now you're getting more juice out of the speakers. You're getting more out of your muscles. Do you think that's going to send a louder signal to the body that says, hey, we're asking these muscles now more of their full capacity. Maybe we should develop them more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact... If you train just for strength, oftentimes with powerlifting principles, oftentimes it's one of, and again, it's not the only thing you should do, but if you haven't done it or you haven't done it and focused on this, sometimes it's the single most effective thing you could do to build the most muscle. By far, just getting stronger. Again, because it's a, a an objective thing to measure, in my experience, it's one of the best things to go after if I want to build muscle. If I want to build muscle on someone, one of the easiest things I focus, unless they're already a powerlifter. So if I get somebody who's already been powerlifting for years, 
then I'm not going to train them with powerlifting principles. I'm going to, I'm going to, and they want to build more muscle. I'm going to move them away and try some different stuff. No bodybuilding for that person. Yeah. Right? Normally it's the thing that you're not doing. That's right. You're right. But if somebody's coming to me like, Hey, I want to build more muscle. I've been bodybuilding or I've been training with weights or I've been doing CrossFit or whatever. One of the easiest things I can do is be like, cool, we're just going to get you really strong and then watch what happens to the muscles of your body. And it works all the time because that amp now is sending more juice or more power to the existing speakers that you have, and your body's saying, hey, we need bigger speakers to deal with this louder signal. But it goes beyond that. You want to talk about functional strength, here's the deal. You get strong because you train with some powerlifting principles, you're strong. In real life, you're strong. You walk around, and you're a strong dude or a strong girl. You're going to pick up just random heavy things. And, and, you, <laughs> and you feel it. That's what I do. Training this way feels different. When I have a, a strong deadlift, a strong squat, a strong bench press, and I'm training with those principles with my, the rest of my workout, and I'm walking around everyday life, I feel solid. It's a very different, even if I weigh the same, you know, I'm 200 pounds one way or the other, I feel very solid. Not just from the inside, I feel that way from the outside. In fact, this is something that, I could, that I've noticed for, for a while and I'm not the only one. This is a commonly recited anecdote that strength athletes and bodybuilders have been talking about for decades. When you train this way, you feel hard. Your muscles feel solid. They feel more dense. They actually even have that appearance of looking a little bit more dense. So you want to talk about aesthetics, you know, how you look. How would you like to look like someone could bounce quarters off your body? Well, this kind of training kind of does that. It gives you that that solid hard feel. And I notice it in the way I feel. Um, I know when Adam, when you switched and started training this way as a competitive physique competitor, you there was one post you did where you showed back. Your, your back, you know, and it's not like you were never training your back. Mm. You always trained your back. It's been a focus forever, right? Throw quarters at you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you your, your back looked vastly different from one, it was like a three, it was, no, maybe a six month period. Yeah, it wasn't, it was six to eight months, I think, that I had been training consistently deadlifts. That was the time when I was Chasing after uh, the numbers that you were hitting deadlifting wise, I'd also at the same time uh, completely stopped doing seated row and a bunch of other uh, machine exercises for my back. And then because again I was focused on catching up numbers, I was programming that way. I was I was deadlifting a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And boy, uh, the it blew uh, my back up. And not only did it blow my back up, and, and talking about aesthetics, I also became much stronger in all these other lifts. That was the the part that, because I under I understand uh, the said principle, and if I'm not doing something like lying leg curls or a seated row, I assume that my body would adapt. I'd get weaker at it. I'd be just strong at doing the deadlift. But that just proves the point of how incredible the carryover is for the movement. Like a deadlift is, I completely neglected those movements for almost a year. I came back to them. And I was stronger than what I left them at. And mm. that just, that blew my mind that I could neglect a move because it, that rule doesn't really apply in everything else. Like, like I said, we, you talk about the said principle and when you focus on a specific adaptation, the body gets really good at that specific adaptation. If you don't, it, it atrophies. It doesn't mm. anymore. But that's how powerful squatting and deadlifting and, and benching can be is that you get really good at those movements and you're going to see this not only a physical carryover like you're explaining with me, but also uh, practical with and functional strength. It's, it blew my mind. It's also uh, one of the best ways that I ever got clients to enjoy working out. You know, um, showing a client strength gains is one of the best motivators that I've ever seen yeah. mm -hmm. uh, with clients, it, even more than the scale changing, honest to God. Like you go into the gym and, you know, you, you, you bench press – a hundred pounds at the beginning of the of our you know package or whatever. Let's say you train for three week for three months. Now you're bench pressing a hundred and fifty pounds. Like that is a very awesome experience. And this kind of training or this kind of focus is awesome. It's it's so different. It's the difference between going to the gym. I'm getting myself sore. I'm sweating. Do I look different? Do I look different? Do I look different? Versus go to the gym, work out. Hey, I got stronger. Yeah. Hey, I'm getting stronger. There's this, it, I don't know. There's the fact where I feel like it it provides more independence 
for people when you get stronger you just can do more things and you don't need to like it doesn't require you to now gather other people to help you do all these things that might require mm-hmm. some you know real strength feats I, there's something that really empowering about that yep, yep. and here's another thing that i like about powerlifting uh type training or powerlifting principles um, and this is similar to olympic lifting because powerlifting is a competitive objective sport um, in other words, if you win a powerlifting competition, it's because you're the strongest. Bottom line, there's no, there's no disputing it. There's no judges. You know, there's nobody saying, "Hey, I don't know if you look better I than didn't me." Lose or, to that guy's glutes. Yeah, it's just I, I lifted more than you, and so I won. So now, what does this mean? Well, what it means is that the 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 training principles around powerlifting have been forged around objective results. So I have seen. If you pull me 10 or 15 workouts off off the internet or 10 or 15 bodybuilding workouts or fat loss workouts, I'll show you 99% of them are terrible, Mm -hmm. terrible workouts. You show me powerlifting workouts that have been used by powerlifters for competitors, I'll show you, for the most part, good exercise programming. Like they work. Yeah. Same thing with Olympic lifting because it either works or it doesn't. It's not like the other stuff, which is so subjective. So- Powerlifting principles are based off of objective results, and that's why oftentimes why they work so well. It's because they've been passed along and been shown to, this will get you stronger at these different lifts. Here's the other thing I love about focusing on this type of strength. Let's say you're working with a client, and your client is uh, cutting calories. They're trying to, to get leaner. And you're analyzing what they're doing. And you noticed that they've dropped two pounds on the scale. Their calories are down 500 calories. But, whoa, you're stronger. How awesome of a signal or sign is that? What does that tell you about the client that you're working with? Mm -hmm. It tells you that their metabolism probably isn't slowing down, even though they've reduced their calories. And the weight that they've lost is probably all body fat. Strength is my one of my favorite signals. If I want to see if something's working or if something's not working, one of the first questions I ask is besides how you feel is, well, how are your lifts? Oh, I'm you know I don't know if this diet's working for me. I lost five pounds, but I don't know if it's all you know body fat or what's going on. Are you stronger? Yes, I am. You're going on the right track. Strength is such a wonderful well, this, sign. This goes back to the point that I was making about uh, exercising versus training. Um, if you come in and you exercise and burn calories uh, for an hour, uh, that might be okay for some people to maintain where they're at. But if you're trying to progress and get better or you know, get leaner or get stronger, then being able to uh, progressively overload and challenge yourself strength-wise then in turn ends up speeding up your metabolism because you're sending a, a stronger signal to the body to adapt and grow. And because of that, you reap the benefits too from uh, the metabolism mm-hmm, side. Mm-hmm. It's so huge. I also like how it, it, it gets rid of a lot of the kind of subjective guesswork mm-hmm. because yeah. you're going to the gym and your goal with this, and this is why I think everybody, everybody, now I've done appropriately, of course, and you know, for people who aren't injured or this is going to hurt them or whatever, I think anybody who lifts weights should go through a powerlifting-like cycle of their training. In fact, the first MAPS program, MAPS Anabolic, that first phase was loosely based off of these kinds of principles. It wasn't a powerlifting program, but it's loosely based on it because- It's a great introduction to yeah, it, I think. Yeah, everybody benefits from it. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. care what your goals are fitness-wise. I think you'll, you will probably benefit from doing a three-month- Focused, you know, on powerlifting type training, uh, type of a workout. Whether it's bodybuilding, bikini, I just want to lose fat, I just want to, you know, lose weight, or I want to build muscle, especially focusing on it for at least three months out of the year, you're going to get huge, huge benefits. It's, I just think it simplifies it down to the core, you know, and it, it it's one of those uh, directions I, I like to steer clients into because. There is so much information out there and so many different ways to skin the cat in terms of like getting in shape and feeling like you're you're making progress on your on your body and your health and your fitness. And this is this is one of those it once you go through 
learning more about these three lifts specifically and what they can do for your body, what they can do for your strength. It's just very revealing in terms of what actually has benefit and maybe some of the surface stuff that, I mean, what's the point? Well, let's be honest. It's a, it's a terrible name. Yeah, for this because it scares a lot of people away. It does. It does. You hear power lift, and you, if you're a girl, that's really intimidating. If you're a guy, you're like, eh, if I don't really identify with trying to be a, a power lifter, I don't really think it's that valuable to me. But the reality of it is, it's the three best movements done probably the best way anybody possibly can, and the, probably one of the most neglected ways of training for the majority. Mm -hmm. But because it's been put in a box uh, or a category. Of this is for power lifters. It's completely uh, done something that I think has uh, got people to to stray away from that way of training. But in reality, when I think back to all the clients that I've trained, uh, the principles that are found in it, which is learning to lift mechanically, getting your entire body to speak to it, focusing on the the three best lifts strength training versus worrying about my weight on the scale and how I look in the mirror. I mean, when I think about the, the core principles behind it, those are some of the most important core principles that I was trying to teach clients. Yet most people are scared to dabble in it because of the name and the stigma that's around it. You envisualize this guy with a big beer belly and chalk all over his body and wearing <laughs> right. spandex and screaming and blood coming out of his nose and ripping a bar off the ground or something. That's the image we have. Yeah, yeah. Smelling salts and people slapping each other. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's extreme. That, yeah, no, that's an extreme. But you know what's funny? It's it's, it's changed quite a bit. Like. I've seen more women um, enter into powerlifting competitions than ever. Yeah. It's exploding. Super awesome. You see a lot yeah. of bikini competitors also in the off-season powerlift because they found that when they powerlift in the off-season, mm -hmm. their metabolism is faster. And when they hit the stage for a bikini competition, they look a lot better, in particular in their glutes, hamstrings, and backs because the deadlift and squat, you know, when you train them for strength, really develop those areas. Bodybuilders for a long time have dabbled in powerlifting. I know Arnold and Franco used to do powerlifting cycles every year in their oh, training. Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie I Coleman. Mean, some yeah. of your most impressive bodybuilders definitely are were powerlifting also. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know that uh, there's there was obviously there's been a a new generation or a new breed. Um, we've talked about this with a lot of our you know hardcore bodybuilder friends that you know, that have begun to rely on uh, pharmaceuticals to try and obtain certain looks that you couldn't get in the past without doing this uh, mm -hmm. type of training. You had to power lift. You had to get to a point uh, to to build, to be able to build that kind of muscle I'll mass. tell you what, the, the, the principles of power lifting, the, 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 all the, the techniques and principles, not competitive power lifting, but the principles around it, I applied – to most of my clients. I really did. And I remember I trained, you guys remember, I've, I've talked about this before, the back half of my career, a lot of my clients were in advanced age. So I was dealing with 60-year-old and plus people. And you think, well, was it appropriate to have them power lift? I trained them appropriately, of course. I made sure that they did things properly. I made sure we did mobility work. It's all relative. I didn't it's all relative. Right. But the results that they got from it, they... It blew everyone. I did this with Doug when Doug hired me. When Doug came to hire me, he came to hire me because he had a bad back. Um, I trained him radically different than anything he was used to, and we did a lot of the principles that you find in powerlifting. And what Doug ended up getting was the best physique he'd ever achieved in his entire life in his mid to late 40s, and the guy had worked out all the time since he was in his teens and 20s. And it was because of this focusing on building strength uh, the right way using these kinds of concepts and principles. I think it's a very good thing. And I really love that I see a lot of, and I see this, especially with women, as I was saying, they're starting to realize the metabolism boosting fat loss effects of just focusing on strength. But the biggest thing is this, and here's what I, I hear from these people all the time, because I have, I, I've had a few online clients that I coach or whatever, and they tell me they like to do powerlifting cycles because it gets them to stop worrying about the way they look. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They're not going to the gym worried about how probably, they. Look. Probably why it's most important today. Totally. I mean, we we just had a podcast where we talked about you know raising kids in this this generation now and comparing ourselves to uh, the Instagram pages that we we follow and 
you know, to, to get people away from that a little bit. Uh, I mean, I think it's always been yeah. important, but I feel like it's more important today than it ever has been. It's you versus the iron. Right. I mean, it's so liberating that way. Like, it's, you're just not, your eyes aren't outside of just that moment you have with that weight in just trying to do your best. No, imagine this right now. If you're listening to this podcast, just, just hear me out, okay? Imagine going to the gym and rather than worrying about how you look and how the workouts are making your body look and looking at yourself in the mirror and am I losing weight? Am I shaping? Is this working? And just that kind of obsession that we all have or that we've all experienced going to the gym. Imagine if you took three months out of your life and now you go to the gym, you don't give a shit about any of that stuff. None of that matters. All that matters is, am I getting stronger? Imagine the feeling of liberation that you'll get from that where you're worrying about, am I eating in a way that's getting me stronger? Am I sleeping in a way that's getting me stronger? Am I lifting weights in a way that's getting me stronger? If I'm getting stronger, I'm doing the right thing, and I really, how I look at this point doesn't matter. Now, some of you may be listening and be like, oh my God, if I don't worry about how I look, I'm going to look terrible. I got some news for you. The opposite actually happens. In fact, this was my main strategy for a lot of my clients, especially my female clients. I would tell, I just, we just had this event in San Jose where we did uh, a live Q&A with uh, mind pump listeners, and we had this VIP area where people could come and have dinner with us and hang out uh, before the event. Well, one of the people that came and had dinner was this guy who'd lost a ton of weight by cutting his calories, cutting his calories. So we're talking, and he was telling me about how stressed he was because he's like, man, I'm I'm counting my macros. I'm looking at my calories. I'm weighing myself every day. I want to make sure I don't gain any weight. So I told him, I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to bump your calories by about 500 calories a day. I want you to focus entirely on getting stronger, and I want you to take your scale. I want you to put it in the closet and don't weigh yourself anymore. Stop weighing yourself for the next couple months, two months. Just stop weighing yourself and do what I just told you. And so he, luckily, I have enough influence because he listens to the podcast that he trusted me. So he did this, got an email from the guy. You want to know what happened? He gained two pounds on the scale, got tremendously stronger, his pants looser. Mm -hmm. What do you think happened? He built muscle and burned body fat. And all he was focused on that entire time was not his weight, not how he looked in the mirror. He was focused entirely on getting stronger. I'm telling you something right now. Now, unless you go nuts for three months, where if th what this means to you is I'm going to go eat donuts all day long and, and whatever. But if you eat relatively healthy and all you focus on is on strength, that's all you're focused on. I'm just how strong I'm getting. And you take that. It is so freeing. I'm telling you right now. It will be the most relaxing, fun three months of working out you've probably had in your entire life because you've been liberated from being so body obsessed. At the end of that, you're going to end up with more muscle, faster metabolism. You might get leaner, but for sure at the end of that, if your goal is to get leaner, with the, working with the faster metabolism makes it a lot easier. This is one of the reasons why I think powerlifting style training, unless you're already a powerlifter, um, will benefit most people, and I think everybody should do a cycle of that kind of training. And it's one of the reasons why we created uh, a powerlifting MAPS program. Yeah. We, we're caught, we get a lot of questions what, when we're going to do a program like this. We knew the value of it. Uh, we knew how it would benefit most people. And so that's why we created a powerlift program that was MAPS. And we also you know, we had somebody work with us who was a – because none of us have competed in powerlifting, although we understand the principles very well. Right. We wanted to make sure just to maintain our integrity, we, we had somebody who was a – champion competitive powerlifter help us write the program. Now, there are some potential drawbacks or some potential um, risks with powerlifting training. The main one is maintaining mobility and yes. reducing risk Joint of injury. Stress. Joint stress. Um, now, here's the wonderful thing. You got guys like us who are very focused on mobility and preventing people from getting hurt. So that, right. that component we put in there. So one thing you will see in a lot of like directions when you're looking at powerlifting and like things on YouTube and people promoting it, uh, there's, there's ways where they try to help aid. There's lots of aids involved in, in the sport of it. And also uh, once, once the numbers become hyper-focused, it, it tends to uh, sort of take over and you'll see a lot of sleeves. You'll see a lot of like uh, different accessories and things like promoted Knee wraps because and it does put a lot of stress on the joints. So maintaining that integrity and, and uh, really having that focus uh, simultaneously alongside 
uh, gaining more strength and ability is is super critical. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I would I would say this right now. If you plan on competing in powerlifting, then you're going to want to train with the tools that they allow you to compete in just so you can get used to using them, like a weight belt. A weight belt is a technique to using one. You don't just put one on and you're automatically stronger. Some people, in fact, will be very uncomfortable the first time they put one on. There's a technique. Same thing with knee wraps. If you plan on competing in powerlifting, though, you got to get good at those things because they can help you. If you don't plan on competing in powerlifting, there's no need in using any of those things. Just train with those powerlifting principles. Don't use any of these you know, knee wraps and belts and that kind of stuff. Focus on priming your body, mobility work, and the results will speak for themselves. Well, this is the first program, too, that we've included coaching, right? That's what I thought was really cool oh, right. and unique about this is – you know, there's a lot of questions I feel that that surrounds uh, the, the sport of powerlifting or training like a powerlifter, and I think uh, Ben Pollock does an incredible job of of giving great coaching cues to really answer a lot of the questions that probably somebody probably has right now. It's listening, going like, okay, I think I want to get involved in this, but I'm not quite sure where to start or what to do. And you know, that was kind of I think our, our main goal was. Uh, to introduce uh, the the general population to something that we think there's a tremendous amount of value in. Right. Uh, it's it's not necessarily we're trying to uh, attract somebody who's been powerlifting their whole life, and and we're we're trying to say our powerlifting program is better. No, so no. I think that we took our uh, years, and decades of experience, and what we know is really important uh, with training, like Justin was pointing out, mobility, and we have like priming and cooling down parts uh, to the the program that I don't see in a lot of uh, powerlifting programs, and that's just kind of our uh, piece that we added to that because it's like okay, we're we're not just speaking to powerlifters, we're speaking to the general population that we want to encourage them to train this way because of the value of it, but we also don't want to neglect the other things that we think are extremely valuable to everybody. So you get that in, inside this. And I haven't personally been uh, this excited to follow a, a program of our own. Like I'm, uh, I'm on yeah. day, I'm on day three now uh, of the program. I waited until we launched for me to go, go through it. And um, I'm excited as shit. Cause I've personally never, uh, program the three lifts to get stronger. I programmed the deadlift a little bit when I was chasing Sal, uh, but never uh, to this to this and to really focus on that. So I'm super pumped uh, to go through this and plan to share that that journey along uh, with everybody else that's going through it. Yeah, and what's great alongside to you know tag on to the coaching portion of it. There's there's a lot of like little nuances and different federation requirements and different pauses of the reps to consider. And, you know, Ben really does an amazing job of laying all that out. So you just really don't have that much confusion going into your very first meet if that was your goal was to eventually go into just Hey, I've always kind of wanted to 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 try this and compete in this, uh, even if it's just at the local level. And, and this is something that uh, is attractive to me. Well, now it's like I I have a lot of this in this program. It it really like highlights, you know, like at like advantages with with how to eat, with how like what to wear and like what to look out for, and so it's just eliminate a lot of the mystery behind it. Yeah, so if you're somebody that like works out on your own and you want to compete in a powerlifting competition, you can follow this program from beginning to end and be ready for a competition. If you just want to train with the concepts and principles, same thing, follow the program. You'll be training like a powerlifter, and what you should experience are significant improvements in the three lifts that we talked about, the deadlift, the barbell squat, uh, and the barbell bench press. Now, this because we are launching... MAPS Powerlift, and it's totally new. We have a launch special. Um, as of the airing of this podcast, there's, there's going to be four days left for this special. So what you got to do to get the discount is go to mapspowerlift.com. Use the code POWER40, P-O-W-E-R, 40, no space for the discount. And also, um, we have uh, free T-shirts for the first people that enroll in this program. So you'll get a free MAPS Powerlift T-shirt uh, by using that discount code and signing up during this launch special period. 